Thank you for joining me today on the Chirpa Squirrel. We, uh, it's a big day here. You can see it's raining. We don't care about that in Georgia. We smoke the rain, sleet, snow, monsoon, hurricane. It don't matter. We're going to smoke meat for Georgia. Got, uh, for the company I run, we got the national safety manager down. His name's Dave. He's from California. He's, he's not one of them liberal pansies, but he is from California. So, uh, he wanted to try some of our smoked meat from the Chirpa Squirrel. And uh, I was talking to him about the way he smoked meat. He's talking about, oh man, I like that white smoke, that mesquite <laughs> smoke, that white stuff. We know, man, on the Chirpa Squirrel, we don't do white smoke. If it's white, it's dirty, and mesquite's nasty. Don't use mesquite, man. Mesquite takes away all the flavor of the food. All you can taste is that nasty ass smoke. So today we're gonna be doing beef short ribs. Look at them bad boys. Look at them bones. What I'm gonna do? And I ain't gonna bore you with it, cause I know y'all know how to cut meat. But we're gonna take all this fat off. Can you see this, Nate? Come down here, Nate. We got the peachy pig doing the uh, filming. We're gonna take all this fat cap off, this silver skin. We're not gonna remove this membrane. On a beef rib, you don't wanna remove the membrane. On a pork rib, you do. So I'm gonna cut all this off, and we'll be back. Thank you. Chirp, chirp, little squirrel. All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see, I've taken most of the fat off, a little bit of silver skin. All this silver skin's got to come off. Cut that stuff off. And again, you don't take the membrane off on a beef rib. If you do, during the cooking process, it's just going to fall apart and it's going to be a mess. So leave that on there. All I'm going to do today, salt and pepper. Peachy Pig did one at his house, already seasoned and everything. He brought it over. Now, I'll, uh, I'll let him tell you what he did to his later, and uh, we're going to try them here. So, as always, coat your salt. Don't use that table crap. You just be mad at yourself. You can uh, put salt on these and dry brown them overnight if you want to, but don't put this much salt if you're going to do that. Doing it here, it ain't gonna be on that long, it's gonna melt down to that meat. That's right. There you go, boys. Black puff. We're gonna go heavy with the black puffer. So I might have to fast forward because this thing right here is gonna be like four years before I get done with it. This is what happens when you run out of your uh, your coarse black pepper because you use it so much, you have to go buy one of these things. Then you gotta come out here and video and do this for later. <laughs> All right, pat that in. We're gonna let this sit here for about 15 minutes. We got the drum, it's sitting on about 250. We got the bulldog drum going today too. We're doing uh, pork loins and a butt. Y'all already seen that, so I didn't videotape it. But it's on my Georgia drum. We're gonna let this hen sit, draw in some of that salt. We're gonna put it on the chirp squirrel drum. See y'all in just a little bit. Chirp, chirp, little squirrel. Guys, welcome back. We got the drum up. It was at 275. I just put my uh, oak and cherry in there. That dropped the temp down some. But uh, it's good enough. We're gonna put these. Uh, beef ribs on there, alright? We got Nathan's, and we got the one that you guys just see me prepare. We're going to run these at about 250. That's what I'm hoping to shoot for. I got the deflector plate and this, this drum set up just like you guys have seen me do it in the past. Nothing fancy. Put them ribs in there. We're going to set them side by side. <clears throat> they pretty, ain't they? Sure. All right, guys, we're going to get the lid shut down. We'll see y'all in two hours. All right, guys, it's been two hours. We're going to spritz with some beef broth out of this beautiful spritzer that I have here. Cool. You can see the bones are starting to pull back real good on both sides. Looking good. Put a little spritz spritz on there. Starting to build the bark. See the bark's not pulling back. That's good. 
the spritz will help with that. Put that beef broth all over that bad boy. I'm not spritzing uh, Peachy Pig over here. He doesn't want beef broth. He's got another technique he's going to use. And I'll show you what he's doing. He don't want me to because he thinks, he thinks it. he's using some HDX. Now I'm just kidding. This is apple cider vinegar. And what else you got in here, Peachy Pig? Apple juice and apple juice, water. And water. Hey, why don't you put on a squirt instead of the? Hey man, why don't you uh, stand over there and film and let me do this? See, now you ain't got me where I can't even squirt the time. Is that good, Peachy Pig? Are mm -hmm. you happy with that amount of stuff on? We're gonna let these cook for about another hour or two. See where we at. Chirp, chirp, little squirrel. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's been three hours, we're gonna spritz. Look at that drawback. Yeah, boy. Spritz these up. Beef broth. We're gonna let them cook probably for another hour. Now Nathan's want me to spritz his with beef broth because he knows I'm always right. Mm. All right. These are about done. We're going to let them cook a little bit longer, and we're going to pull them off and eat. All right, guys. Four hours in. This meat's done. Maybe you want to come look at it. The internal temp is about 202 degrees. We did rotate it one time, so this is the one that I prepared. This is the one that Nathan prepared. I'm going to wrap them in foil, and then we're going to put them in a blanket and just let them rest for an hour. We're not putting them back on. Look how, look how thin them bad boys are. Look at that. Going to wrap them loose like this. I'm going to take the other one off. I'm going to do it the same way. We're going to wrap it with a blanket, and in one hour we'll be back. Cut it up. Chirp, chirp, little squirrel. What's up, everybody? We're up on the deck. Cook's done. The, the meat has rested for about an hour and a half. We're going to slice it open and see what we got. You want me to join me down here, Nate? She's tender. Look at that, boy. That butter. Mm. Man, look at that prettiness. Look at that juice. Ooh, doggies. Yes, sir. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a plate for Safety Dave from California who likes that nasty mesquite stuff. That So we're going to make him a plate and let him taste these ribs. We'll be back in like 30 seconds. All right, everybody. We got Safety Dave here. He's from California. We're gonna let him uh, pick up this uh, dinosaur bone and try this ribs and give us his uh, give us give us his two cents. Yeah, Wait. that's really good. Nice and juicy. Got that smoke flavor. Good what? bark. Hey. Good. No, it's good. It's good. All right. So there you have it. What do you think? Better than mesquite. I won't say that, but it is really fine barbecue. <laughs> Man, a guy that likes mesquite, I don't get it. This is real good. This has a lot of good flavor, good beef flavor. You got just enough smoke on it. I could eat this every day. All right. So we got you some Georgia watermelon, some asparagus, and some homemade mac and cheese there. What you think of that mac and cheese there, Super Dave? Yeah, that's really good. Really cheesy. There you go. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. California Dave. You can sell this plate. 